All right, thank you everyone for joining. It's just about two o'clock here, so we will get started in about 30 seconds just to let everyone get in. I do wanna also say, please bear with me as I'm currently doing this webinar from the safe confines of my home. Um, of course, under current circumstances happening around the country and around the world, we're all adjusting the best that we can. So if there are any technical hiccups, please let me know um, and I'll do my best to get through them. But first I wanna make sure that everyone can hear me. So if you can hear me, please raise your hand so that I know you can hear. All right, excellent. So it looks like we're good to go. I'll go ahead and get started. First of all, I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Um, for this webinar about the Master of Science in Management or MSM program at the Mendoza College of Business here at the University of Notre Dame. I'll introduce myself and then we'll get going with the program overview. I'll also have some tips for the application process and of course, any questions that you have, I'll make sure that there's time at the end of the webinar so that you can answer or ask any of those questions. If you do have questions throughout, that's totally fine. Feel free to ask me. I do ask, please use the Q&A function instead of the chat. Um, I will be able to access the Q&A function of Zoom throughout. So if you have a question, feel free to type it at any time and I'll try to answer those. But again, please use the Q&A function as opposed to the chat function. So we'll go ahead and get started. So my name is Phil Drendel, and I am an Assistant Director of Admissions for the MSM program at the University of Notre Dame Mendoza College of Business. Uh, just a few notes about me uh, before we get started into the content of the webinar. So I have been a part of Mendoza full time for about six months, but I've been working in various positions in Mendoza for just about a year. I was born and raised here in lovely South Bend, Indiana. Actually, the weather today is pretty good. It's about 60 degrees and sunny, so it's a nice, nice day here in spring. I went to Notre Dame for my undergraduate career. I was a psychology major, and unfortunately at that time, there was no such program like the MSM, so I was not quite sure what I wanted to do after graduation, and I knew that I wasn't ready to jump into psychology. So I ended up moving to South Korea. So the picture on the left is the Seoul skyline and Seoul Tower there. And I ended up living in South Korea for about nine years, teaching English, writing textbooks. I was a professor for a couple of years. I was in administration, loved my time in Korea. However, I decided that uh, nine years was enough there. So about two years ago, I moved back to South Bend, back to my home under the dome. I had so many great experiences here. You can see that I was in the marching band on the far right, representing the tuba section. Um, and I worked on getting my master's of science in higher education, student affairs. And that is what brought me to Mendoza. So I am currently now the lead recruiter of the MSM program and the assistant director of admissions. So just a quick note on the University of Notre Dame, quick history for you. So Notre Dame was founded in 1842 by Father Edward Soren, um, who is a Holy Cross priest from France. He, along with a group of other seven brothers, traveled to Northern Indiana near the two lakes that you can see on our campus and decided that they wanted to set up a school that was to be the most powerful means of doing good in the country. Since that time, Notre Dame has grown quite a bit. We now currently have about 12,000 students on campus with 3,000 of those being graduate students. The business school, the Mendoza College of Business as it's now called, was founded in 1921. So just coming up on our 100 year anniversary next year. It was founded by John Cardinal O'Hara and he felt that business school was a great way to advanced civilization. It's what's brought about our new slogan, Grow the Good in Business, which you can kind of see behind me oh, here on the wall. Um, at Notre Dame, we truly believe that 
business is a service to mankind. It is a tool that can be used to advance civilization to actually grow the good in business. From our humble beginnings in 1921, our program has flourished, our business school has flourished. We now have top ranked programs in undergraduate business, graduate business, and executive education. The MSM program is currently ranked number five in America amongst other Masters of Science in Management programs. I'm going to go ahead and go offline so you can see the screen, you can see the slides without my face in the way. Um, but at Notre Dame, we really do ask more of business and we think that you can grow the good in business. And we do this in a variety of different ways, one of which being our close-knit community. You may have heard before that Notre Dame is a family. Well, we really believe that we are a family and Mendoza is a family and the MSM is even a closer family than that. You work together, you collaborate, you end up reaching the same ultimate goal together. And a lot of this also has to do with our network strength and the power of our alumni. So Notre Dame has been ranked number four globally in alumni effectiveness. There are over 270 alumni clubs worldwide. All across the world, we have these alumni clubs. So for example, when I was traveling in Hong Kong, Notre Dame was playing the University of Michigan in a football game. I was able to contact the Notre Dame Club of Hong Kong, reach out to them and ask them what they were doing. They were hosting a game watch. Um, so I got to go and I got to network with a bunch of different people that were living in Hong Kong, whether they're alumni or somehow connected to the university. And I got to see us beat the University of Michigan, which is always a fantastic thing. We also have experiential learning. So with the MSM program, we have what are called interterm intensives. One week in the fall, one week in the spring, we offer the ability for you to apply what you learned in the classroom in real life. So we've done a variety of different things with the MSM program. We've brought in outside companies to come to campus and give real world situations so that our students can kind of solve those problems in an actual business setting. We've done deep dives into specific skills such as business analytics and programming or looking more into how to create your personal brand, case competition, all sorts of different things. Because if you can't actually apply what you learn in the classroom, then it's purely theoretical and it doesn't quite prepare you for life after graduation. We want to make sure that you are prepared, you're ready to jump into a professional workforce and this experiential learning will help you do this. We also, in the spring, offer international immersion opportunities. Uh, this year, we offered three different locations for that international immersion. We had a South America trek with Santiago, Chile and Buenos Aires, Argentina. We had a South Africa trek with Johannesburg and Cape Town. And we had an Asia trek with Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam and Shanghai, China. Um, of course, with all of this current COVID-19 situation going on, unfortunately, we had to cancel the Asia trip. Our South Africa students still were able to go. They made it just under the wire, and they had an amazing time learning about various industries and fields of business that are conducted in South Africa, looking at how business ethics are conducted and how they differ between our cultural norms here in America and maybe what is commonplace in a place like South Africa. You'll see that ethics are woven throughout the curriculum. It's not just a class, it is who we are. Uh, it's the importance of asking how decisions impact those around you and the world as a whole. A lot of people ask, what makes the MSM program at Notre Dame different than any other? I think that there are many answers to that, of course, but one of them is that ethical foundation that we have. I'm not saying that other business schools don't teach business ethics. I know that business ethics is important in business and other schools do a great job focusing on it. However, it is something that is very evident as soon as you step on campus here at the University of Notre Dame your first class and the rest of the curriculum, you can see the ethics that is woven throughout. We're constantly asking our students, what do they wanna do with business? How can they change the world? How can they, 
grow the good in business. And it's that ethical foundation that really makes Notre Dame and the Mendoza College of Business different than any other program that you'll find. So a little bit about the MSM makeup. So our start date is still set for June 2020. I know that there's a lot of uncertainty going on as far as social distancing, operations of universities, um, visas and everything like that. However, I will tell you at this time, we are still slated to begin with orientation on June 15th of 2020 and the first day of classes starting the following week on June 22nd. Now, we are hoping that will be possible on campus. However, we're realistic and we wanna keep your safety, the safety of our students, faculty, staff at top of mind. And so we are developing some contingency plans to possibly move the orientation and the summer term online if needed. We have not made that decision yet because this, honestly, the situation is constantly changing day to day. So I will tell you, as we have more information, we will be sure to share that with you. The MSM cohort is typically about 48 to 52 students, and the program lasts 11 months. So you begin in June with orientation, your summer term, seven weeks, you're hitting the ground running, you're learning the foundations of business in a variety of different subjects, having final tests every other week, just so that in the fall, you can kind of dive a little bit deeper into more of a master's level understanding of business. We don't ask for any prior work experience. Actually, we would prefer less work experience as opposed to more. So the average work experience for our students is zero to two years, um, with 75% of the incoming class having no work experience at all, no full-time work experience, that is. So 75% coming straight out of undergraduate, and then about 25% having one or two years, possibly three years is okay, um, of work experience, but typically no more than that. We are a very collaborative cohort. We work together. We take all the same courses together. We play off of each other's strengths. So I think one beauty about the MSM program is that all of our students come from such a wide array of backgrounds and majors and specialties, maybe in some of the quantitative courses such as finance or accounting or business analytics, the arts and letters majors don't feel as strong about that. Well, that's where their classmates, the cohort mates that were maybe engineering or pre-professional or science, maybe more quant heavy backgrounds can come in and help them. And the same goes the other way as well for communications courses, writing, speaking, marketing, Maybe the science and engineering students don't feel as comfortable and that's where the arts and letters students are able to come in and help. It is a very collaborative cohort. It's a very collaborative setting. Um, and it is specifically for students who graduate with non-business degrees. So if you are a business major, unfortunately you would not qualify for the MSM program. We do accept econ majors, poli-sci majors, science business, business minors. Typically the rule of thumb is if you have less than 18 credit hours of business, then you would qualify for our program. The only concern is, and the reason that we don't accept business majors is that there is some overlap. Now we are getting classes in the MSM program at a master's level understanding. However, since a lot of students don't have any business background, the beginning parts of those courses are geared more towards fundamentals and basics. We don't want you as a business major to have to go through the, something that you've already learned. So that is why we specifically keep the MSM program to non-business majors. As you can see from this slide, there are a variety of different majors, a variety of different colleges and universities represented in the MSM cohort. We have probably about 35% of the cohort currently that were Notre Dame undergrads. So it's open to anyone, a variety of different majors, as you can see here, chemistry majors, music majors, psychology, studio art. It is kind of all across the board, a variety of majors, undergraduate institutions, geographic regions, and countries as well. 
So I mentioned that we are an 11 month program. We begin in summer with our orientation week, again, starting June 15th. And then we have a seven week program in the summer. And then in, starting in the fall and the spring, we kind of break the schedule up into what we call modules. It's almost like the quarter system. So they're seven weeks long and the breaks in between mods one and two and three and four, those are those interterm intensive weeks that I talked about with the experiential hands-on learning. The spring interterm intensive is that opportunity for the international immersion trip. Um, so that's just a basic structure. Class-wise, our classes go Monday through Thursday, typically ending around 3 or 3.30 p.m. Fridays are off. Every once in a while, you'll get a guest lecturer come in or some sort of networking event or field trip or trek that will happen on a Friday. But for the most part, Fridays are open. Here are the basic courses that we have. So they're foundational business courses, but master's level of understanding. These courses are tailored for individuals who have not yet studied business. So again, you'll receive the basics, but then you'll go deeper into more of a master's level understanding after getting those basics. So accounting, finance, management, econ, ethics, business ethics, business analytics, marketing. I want to bring specific attention to the bottom left where it says bridge to success. This is a course that is unique to Notre Dame and something another point that really sets us apart from other programs. The Bridge to Success course is taught through the Career Center, the Mendoza Career Center. So this is an opportunity for you to blend your unique background with the skills that we give you so that you can create your own personal brand to then market to companies that are looking to hire. So part of this course is how to do interview prep. This last year, actually, before this social distancing policy began. We started with virtual interview prep, virtual career fairs, how best to show yourself in a virtual setting, work on cold calling, how to do happy hours, and basically how to market yourself in such a short time span. A lot of students really find this Bridge to Success course extremely helpful, especially when the recruiting cycle begins. Um, the recruiting cycle can begin as early as September or October, depending on what sort of job you're looking for. So the career coach will reach out to you even before you get on campus, look at your resume, talk to you about what you're interested in. And then this Bridge to Success course is taught primarily in the summer so that when the fall recruiting cycle begins, you're prepared, you're ready to go, and you're ready to go out and get that job. A little bit more into the interterm experiences and electives. So typically in fall 2020, we have more of a deep dive on campus. As I mentioned, sometimes we bring in outside companies. Um, this year, I think we're gonna be focusing more on deep diving into specific skills. Students from the past in this current cohort have recognized that there are certain skills that they would like to know more about. And honestly, in order for us to stay relevant and stay ahead of the curve, we like to identify ways in which the program, you know, can excel, changes that we can make so that you can stay ahead of the rest of the game. So a lot of more focus on business analytics and program is something that we're really looking forward into doing, as well as, you know, possible case competitions or going to a specific skill. We're also looking to institute treks. So last year we did a trek in Chicago, visiting different companies in different industries. We're looking at doing something similar next year to Chicago and Indianapolis. This spring, we had a trek that went to different wineries, breweries, and distilleries in Michigan close by, and kind of looking at the process of how that is done, how businesses ran kind of at a more local level. In spring, there is that 10-day international immersion trip. So to Asia, to South America, or to South Africa. You also have the option to stay on campus. That is an optional trip. However, um, I would say a lot of our MSM students really enjoy that trip. It's a good opportunity for you to not only travel, see a new part of the world, but also to see how business is done globally. It also gives you the opportunity to work with students from other programs. So it's not just an MSM specific trip. We have a lot of students from our one-year MBA, our two-year MBA, 
our MSA program, and we're looking at possibly adding the MSBA in the future as well. This year, we have an elective option called the 10 Years Hence Lecture Series. This is an optional elective in the spring. I will say that next year, we are looking to possibly add more elective opportunities. So for those of you who may be econ majors or have taken several econ courses, we're looking at the possibility of testing out of econ and then opening it up to allow you to take more MBA level courses or other courses in different majors. Even if you aren't testing out of an econ course or something like that, we still allow you to take courses outside of the set MSM curriculum. Um, all we would probably ask is that you get permission from that professor and from your academic advisor, but we have had MSM students in the past take MBA level courses and do very well. We've had students take courses at Notre Dame outside of Mendoza, and that's also fine. Again, as long as you get permission and you can handle the work, we let you do that. The MSM program has our MSM association or MSMA. So this is giving you the opportunity as parts of the MSM to really take a leadership role and to run with it. So you run for office in the MSM association pretty much a month or so after you get on campus, you run for one of our four positions in the MSM. A, um, you have the opportunity to organize community service, student activities, design class apparel, work with other uh, associations such as the MSA Association or the MBA Association. There are a variety of clubs as well. So some student organizations that are open to MSM students would include the Marketing Club, Business Analytics Club, Consulting, Women in Business, Black Graduates in Management, Net Impact, there are a variety of clubs, Mendoza specific clubs, that are open to MSM students. We're also looking at the possibility of adding so kind of a mentor mentee program with our MBA students. So, since the MBA students typically have more work experience, especially in specific areas that our MSM students might be interested in, we're looking to foster those relationships and really create sort of a mentor mentee dynamic. On top of this, the majority of clubs that are offered at Notre Dame to undergrads are also offered to our graduate students. So if there is something that you're interested in, whether it's something you've done for a long time or something new that you wanna try, pretty much you'll be able to find it at Notre Dame. So for example, this last year, we just established a juggling club. Apparently there are enough people on campus who are super into juggling. That's cool. They started a club, it's now sponsored by the university. That's great. Anything that you're interested in, you're more than welcome to join. At Notre Dame, we don't only want you to develop inside the classroom and sharpen your business acumen, but we also want you to develop outside of the classroom into the person that you are and hopefully the person that you are going to be after your time at Notre Dame. So the admissions process. Some of you may have already sent in your applications. Others may be currently in the process of completing your application. I'll just quickly go through and I'll give some tips um, so that if you have yet to submit your application, it might help you in doing so. So in order to apply for the MSM program, all we ask from you is one resume. So typically a one page resume most of our students are directly out of undergrad, so there's not a lot that they need to fill out. So a one-page resume, one essay that is typically two pages double-spaced with your name at the top, a four-slide PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this is unique to our application, and it's a chance for you to show us who you are outside of your resume. It's a my favorite part of the application for sure, but it's you know the chance for you to be creative, show what you're passionate about, show what's important to you, show what your hobbies are. Basically, it's a chance for you to show who you are that I can't find four other places in your application. When you're doing your PowerPoints, I ask that you please upload them as PDFs. You're not going to be presenting them, so just upload them as PDFs and have fun with it. I would say less is more. Personal pictures are great. Clip art is fine. 
be creative. Don't just write black words on a white background, okay? We read enough essays as it is. I don't need to read another essay via PowerPoint. So another tip would be don't just break up your resume into th three or four chunks, okay? Have fun with it. Show your creativity. Show your passion. Um, a lot of students ask if they need a cover slide. That's totally up to you. If you'd like a cover slide as one of your four slides, that's fine. It's not necessary. We also ask for two letters of recommendations. And with the MSM program, we ask that one of those letters of recommendations be from an academic source. So if it's from a professor or an academic advisor, um, that, those would be some great examples of that. If you want both of your letters to be from academic sources, that's fine. One tip that I'll give for the letters of recommendation it is better to have a letter of recommendation from someone who knows who you are as opposed to someone with a fancy title. So if you had an internship over the summer and you have a manager that you worked really closely with, it's probably better to have a letter of recommendation from that manager as opposed to the vice president of the company who doesn't really know who you are or what you've accomplished. When you apply, all we ask is that you submit your recommender's email addresses, and then we send them a form directly. So all you do is put in their contact information, and then we do the rest. We let them take care of the rest. I will recommend, or I would advise you, reach out to these recommenders before you send them the link. Just tell them a little bit about the program, a little bit about why you're interested, and also remind them of your strengths. Remind them why you are a great candidate. That will definitely help them in their process of writing you a hopefully strong letter of recommendation. Typically, we do ask that our applicants take the GMAT or GRE. However, with the current situation happening around the country and around the world, we are waiving that requirement. So if you've already taken the GMAT or GRE, please submit those scores. It is very helpful to us in order to get a complete view of an applicant. If you have not taken those exams, it's totally fine. There will not be a negative impact on your application if you do not take the GMAT or GRE. I know that the GRE company, ETS, they're looking at doing an online version of the GRE that can be taken at home. If you want to take this, go for it. It's up to you. If you don't wanna take it again, it's not going to negatively impact your application or your admissibility, all right? As far as official transcripts go, when you apply, we do not need your official transcripts. We just need your unofficial transcripts. Should you be admitted to the program, that is when you would send us your official transcripts. If you studied abroad, then as long as your grades are reflected somewhere on your transcript, that's all that we need. We don't need the official transcripts from those other universities. As long as the letter grades are shown on your official transcript from your original university or college, that should be totally fine. We also ask for a $50 application fee. However, in order to thank you for joining me with this webinar, I will waive that fee. So if you use the code IRISHWEB, I-R-I-S-H-W-E-B, then that will waive your application fee. When you put in the code, please do not use any spaces and use all capital letters. So all caps, no space, Irish web. That way the computer will recognize the code and you'll, you won't have to pay the $50. Um, I do ask, please write this down so that I don't have a bunch of people emailing me later asking me for the application fee. Um, Irish web, all one word, all capital letters. And then there is an optional, well, not an optional interview. So there is an interview portion to the application. I will say that not all applicants receive an interview. However, if you are invited to interview, we offer Zoom interviews. So all of you obviously know how Zoom works because you are currently using it. And we will offer a Zoom interview to you. You'll be receiving an invitation and then you can set that up and be invited for an interview. As far as admissions deadlines. So 
it is a little bit later in this cycle. We have our round four deadline coming up April 27th, and you'll receive a decision by May 15th. However, I encourage you, all of you, to apply by the end of March if you have not done so. Um, we're having an unofficial application deadline just because of all of this stuff that's been happening around the country and the world. Um, I wanted to extend, basically extend that St. Patrick's Day deadline to March 31st. So if you get your application submitted by March 31st, you will receive a decision by the middle of April. So if, again, if you apply by March 31st, you will receive a decision by April 17th. So I have a question here about an interview. So are you removed from the application process if you do not receive an interview? So interview invitations can come at any time. We do not remove you from the application process if you do not receive an interview. The timing of everything, we may opt to interview you a little bit later in the cycle. So no, we do not remove your application if you do not receive an interview because it it differs as far as the timing of when you are invited to an interview. Thank you for that question. Here's another one. Can you defer admission to the MSM one year? So I will say that deferment is rare. However, it is possible. It has been done before. And especially with our current circumstances, it is something that we would definitely take into advice or into uh, consideration. So. If you would like to defer your decision until the following year, we would then talk one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one about the possibility of doing that. Um, let's see, what are the job prospects of graduates from this program? Do they usually stay in the Midwest? Thank you so much for your question. So I think one beauty about this program and Notre Dame is that because we have such a wide-reaching alumni network and such a wide-reaching brand, our students get jobs all across the United States. So I would say last year, of those that were seeking jobs, 100% were offered jobs. And about 37% ended up staying in the Midwest. Uh, just because of our proximity to Chicago, it's easy for a lot of students to go and quickly interview there and for um, companies to come to campus. However, we do have a large group of students that go to the East Coast, specifically the New York area. Traditionally, in the past, we've had a lot of students also go to the West Coast, more San Francisco, especially with tech-driven industries. We've seen a little bit of a downturn on that just because, honestly, the tech, um, you know, the tech industry is going nationwide. It's not just focused in the San Francisco Bay Area anymore. But we have a lot that go to Texas and a lot in the South and all over. So even though there's a slight uptick in the Midwest, I would say that it's kind of all over the place. As far as industries go, just like the MSM program, it's all over the board. So I would say we have quite a few students that go into consulting, healthcare, tech, but it's again, kind of all over the place because our students have such unique backgrounds, because they all want to do something unique that blends their background with the skills we give them. There's not one or two industries or one or two concentrations that really have a sharp, you know, rise as opposed to the others. Who will be on the interview panel? So our various recruiters do the interviews. It's a one-on-one -on -one interview. Um, I usually handle a lot of the MSM interviews. However, we have a variety of different recruiters from all the different programs. We all help each other out. So it could be someone who focuses more on the MBA, the MSBA, the MSA, or myself. However, we all know all of the other programs very well. We all work very closely with each other. So it will be one-on-one -on -one interview with one of our directors, assistant directors of admissions. Thank you for the question. So again, going just back to the admissions deadlines, a reminder, so if you apply by the end of the month, you will receive a decision by April 17th. Um, hopefully by then, we're, honestly, we're still also getting used to working from home, to you know being not in the same building, in the same city even at some time. So we're working on it, but 
know that getting a decision to you, we understand the importance of, the, uh, of a timely decision. So we are working hard in order to process those just as normal. It's business as usual. We are all here. If you ever have any questions or you need to reach out to a representative from Mendoza, we're all available and ready to answer any questions that you may have. So another questions, a couple of other questions came up. So are there opportunities to meet ND MSM alumni during the MSM program? So we do have several events where alumni are invited back to campus to speak. Traditionally during orientation, we have an alumni panel and then various events throughout the year. We have several ND MSM alums that come back and talk about their experiences, whether it's in a formal setting such as a panel or a guest speaker, or an informal setting, such as a, a Mendoza tailgate before a football game. We, there are often opportunities for you to connect with previous MSM students and graduates in order to you know, connect with them. I would encourage if there's a current MSM student that you would like to get questions from, we do have our contact a student function on our MSM website. You can kind of look into their majors, their backgrounds, and then reach out to them and see if maybe they can answer any questions that you might have. If you've taken the GRE, is it required or recommended that you submit scores? Honestly, I would say it's up to you. If you think that your scores will help you and make your application stronger, I would encourage you to then submit your GRE scores. If you think that it's not going to help you or there are any difficulties or anything uploading your scores, you don't have to do that either. Again, you will, your application will not be negatively affected by your GRE score or your lack of GRE scores. Um, so before this all happened and GRE tests were being administered as normal, I would say if you think that your GPA is not quite reflecting your capabilities in the classroom, a GRE score is a great way to show that you are capable of succeeding in a business class. Um, of course, with different circumstances now, it's, I, it's hard for me to say that because I'm not gonna ask anyone to take the GRE. But if you think that it will inevitably help your case, then I would say go for it. Same thing, I get a lot of questions about pass and pass fail courses, especially this current semester. I understand that a lot of universities are moving either to pure pass fail or to give you the option of taking a letter grade or pass no credit. Same thing, if you think that your letter score, if you have the option that your letter score is going to help your case, improve your GPA, I would do that. If you're not sure, or you think that you won't improve, just do the pass fail. We are totally understanding, especially with these unique circumstances, that you know we, it's not an ideal world and we're just going along with it as well. We're trying to be understanding of your situation as well. So just do what you think will give you the best case if I was to look at your application. If accepted, is there a deadline to submit a deposit before the author is, offer is withdrawn? So typically after you receive a decision, we give 30 days for you to pay a $1,000 deposit to hold, to reserve your spot in the program. Honestly, we understand, especially with these circumstances, but otherwise as well, sometimes you, it's hard to pay that in a 30 day window, at which point if you want to come to me and talk about the possibility of extending it or what needs to be done. It's something that we would handle then offline. Um, but typically it's a 30 day window in order to submit your deposit. Um, obviously, as we're a little bit later in the cycle and the program starts in less than three months, that window is a little bit smaller than if someone would apply earlier just because you know, the program starts mid-June. So we wanna make sure that you have the deposit in and that way we're able to process everything and get you in the system, get your ID cards, get everything ready for you to be able to succeed once you step on campus. So why the MSM? 
I've talked about a variety of different things. There are a bunch more other great points about the program, but just to quickly, you know, recap, we have our one-on-one -on -one career coach. We have a career coach that works specifically with the MSM program. Be, even before you get on campus, she's talking to you about what is it that you want to do. Look at your resume, kind of give you tips, teaching the British success course. And then throughout the year, she's working with you as far as, you know, trying to narrow down what it is you want to do, get you set up with companies that fit your vision, your passion. And honestly, she has worked with people that have graduated two, three years ago. She just told me that she received a phone call from someone who graduated three years ago asking for advice on how to get a job. Because she's been with the MSM program for quite a long period of time, she remembers these students and she's more than happy to help out. We also have our international immersion trips to Asia, South America, or South Africa, 10-day trips that are offered in the spring. You're able to pair your MSM with a one-year MBA. So our MSM curriculum pretty much mirrors the first year of our two-year MBA program. So a lot of students, when they complete the MSM program, they get some work experience under their belt, typically three to five years, and then they would qualify for the one-year accelerated MBA program that we offer here at the University of Notre Dame. And then the Notre Dame Alumni Network, I mentioned that we're the number four most effective alumni network globally. It sounds like just a weird stat, but honestly, a network is what's gonna get you to that next level. The Notre Dame Network is what took me to South Korea. It's what got me my first promotion in South Korea. It's what brought me back to South Bend. It's what got me into Mendoza. And finally, what landed me my full-time job. The network, it sounds scary to access a network, but we give you the tools needed to tap into that network to get you to where you want to go. For the application fee waiver, I mentioned that the code is Irish Web, all capital letters, all one word. You can find this at the bottom of the additional information page. One other thing about that additional information page that is very important, at the top of this additional information page is a question about fellowships. Fellowships are the Notre Dame word for scholarships. So we do offer merit-based scholarships to everyone who asks for it. All you need to do is simply select from the drop-down menu, yes, I would like to be considered for a fellowship. And the rest is out of your hands. So we look at each application holistically, resume, cover letter, or um, sorry, letters of recommendation, essays, slides, interview, extracurriculars, leadership opportunities, summer jobs, everything. We look at it all and we offer merit-based aid. Typically that ranges between $3,000 and $15,000. I will say, that we just announced that we are going to lower our tuition from where it is now. So if you go on our website, you can find links to the fi Office of Financial Aid, and there you'll find some information as far as costs and tuition. Note that those numbers, those figures, are based off of the current tuition. We have reduced tuition by 15% for this upcoming year. We are the first university to make this massive of a tuition cut that we've ever found. I mean, we've researched it, and in order to make this big of a jump, 15% decrease is unprecedented. So um, note that the fellowships that are offered reflect that decrease in tuition as well. So typically ranging from $3,000 to $15,000. As far as other funding goes, we do have a lot of students that get part-time jobs on campus. I would say of the current MSM co cohort, about 70% work part-time either on campus or off campus. Because of the way the schedule is set up with Fridays not having classes, being done by 3 or 3.30 every day, it does open up the opportunity for you to work part-time on campus. We also have research assistant positions and teaching assistant positions that are primarily 
negotiated between the faculty and the students directly. It's hard for us to dictate or predict the needs of the faculty members as far as research assistants or teacher assistants go. But I would encourage you, if there is a particular field that you're really interested in, contact that professor. One great thing about the MSM program is that you are some of the first people on campus in the summer. That gives you the opportunity to kind of get your foot in the door first and you know, secure those positions. There are also a lot of outside scholarships. So I am not legally able to recommend any outside scholarships, but I will say if you Google graduate program scholarships, there are a lot that pop up you can find some that fit your specific circumstance and apply it that way. We also have FAFSA loans, our Office of Financial Aid, Student Loans and Financial Aid. They will help you. They've been very accommodating in the past as well. So I got a question here for about um, career outcomes. So do you collect data on the average salary and bonus of your graduates? So again, because we're kind of all across the map as far as you know industries and what positions people get after graduation it's hard to nail this down i will say that of last year's class the average starting salary was around sixty-five thousand dollars um coming out of the msm program so i do have that figure that i'm happy to share with you so that is the end of what i have I will stay on the line anymore for questions that you might have. Again, use the Q&A function. If you don't have questions, I really thank you for joining me today. I hope that I answered any questions that you have. If you would like to contact me directly, I'm more than happy to, con to connect with you offline. Um, my email address that I will be checking is msm.business at nd.edu, msm.business at nd.edu. If you have a question for me about anything at all, feel free to email me. I'm happy to answer those questions for you. Um, and I just, I really thank you for coming. I'll get back online here. So I really thank you for coming and you know listening to me. Again, if you have questions now, feel free to ask me. And if you don't, I really hope that you and your family are safe, healthy, happy during this time of uncertainty. I know that it's not an easy time for anyone um, to socially distance or self quarantine or whatever term you want to use. But know that I'm here for you, the University of Notre Dame and Mendoza College of Business. We're here to help you in any way that we can. We're here to you know, help you get through the application process or with any questions that you have, um, please let us know. I sincerely thank you. I'll stay on the line here for a couple more minutes if there are any other questions. But if not, I hope that you have a great day. Take care and go Irish. Okay, so it's looking like there are not any more questions. Again, feel free to email me. Give me a phone call. I can send you my phone number um, via email if you would like, or we can Zoom chat one-on-one -on -one as well with any questions you have. Again, I encourage you, please apply by March 31st. We'll make sure that we get a decision out to you two or three weeks after you apply. All right, thank you so much. Take care, and I will see you all hopefully throughout the application process.